Hi, I'm Lawrence Cornfield with Building San Francisco. We're doing a special series called Stay Safe here at the Spur Urban Center on Mission Street in San Francisco. And today we are going to talk about what shelter in place or safe enough to stay in your home means. We're here at the Spur Urban Center on Mission Street in San Francisco, and we're joined by Sarah Karlinski, the Deputy Director of Spur, who is one of the uh, one of the persons who pushed along this whole shelter in place and safe enough to stay concept. And we want to talk today about what safe enough to stay means and why it's important in San Francisco. As you know, the Bay Area has a 63% chance of having a major earthquake at some point in the next 30 years. And that's, that's very serious, and that's going to impact a lot of people, and um, particularly people in San Francisco, because we live on a, on a major fault. So what does this mean for us? Well, um, part of what it means is that potentially 25% of San Francisco's building stock will be uninhabitable after an earthquake if we don't do anything about it. And that means that people won't be able to stay in their homes after an earthquake. They, um, they may have to go to shelters, they may end up leaving the city entirely, and we don't want that to happen. We want to be able to keep our people in San Francisco. So we want to both have a building stock that allows people to stay in their homes and we want to encourage people when they possibly can to stay and not to relocate to other locations or That's shelters. That's right. That's right. And so uh, what that means is that the housing needs to be safe enough so people can stay. And um, we've been really focused on trying to define what that means. And, and you as a former building official know better than anybody that the current building code basically says, hey, if an earthquake happens, your building won't kill you. But it doesn't necessarily say, hey, if an earthquake happens, you can stay in your home. And so we set out to try to define what that what that might mean. Um, and as you know, because you built this, uh, this great little house that we're in right now, this house shows you what, uh, what it might be like to live in a home that's safe enough to stay. It's not gonna be perfect. There are gonna be some cracks in the walls. Uh, you might not even have gas and electricity for a while, but you can basically essentially camp out within your unit. Now, uh, what's it going to take for our housing stock to, to get up to this standard? That's something that you and I spent a lot of time talking about. And one of the building types that we talked about most of all um, are what's called the soft story buildings. And um, those are buildings where the, the ground floor is very, very vulnerable, either because there are a lot of openings for garages or there are openings for windows. And during an earthquake, those are the buildings that we saw in the marina that just went, whoosh, right. they went right over. And they, those are not going to be vulnerable buildings. very vulnerable. And there are a lot of apartment buildings in San Francisco that are like that. So one of our key recommendations is, hey, you know what? It's time to retrofit those buildings and make them strong enough so that people can stay in them after the earthquake. So what do you think it takes to get people to take this all seriously and retrofit? Do they just need information? Do they need incentives? Do they need mandates? What, what, what makes people do something? Yeah, that's a really great question. I think it definitely starts first with information. I think that a lot of people think that new buildings are earthquake proof, for example. They don't, they don't really understand what kind of performance their building will have. And so part of what we want to see is a, a really transparent way of letting people know, hey, is my building going to be safe enough to, um, for me to stay in it after an earthquake? Is my building so dangerous that I, could, I should be mm -hmm. af afraid of being seriously injured? Um, so uh, developing kind of a ranking system for buildings uh, I think would be very important. And then I think for some of the, the larger apartment buildings that are soft story, um, that we, you know, we need a, a mandatory program to fix, fix those buildings, not overnight and not without financial help or some form of incentive, but uh, a phased program over time that's reasonable um, so we can fix those buildings. And then for the smaller soft story buildings, and that's you know a lot of San Francisco or those houses over garage, um, we need a lot of information and incentives and just coaxing people along right. because yeah. I think each of those property owners really wants their home to be right. safe enough. We want hand holding, we want information, we want to assist them. We don't want to just mandate everybody do things. Yes, yeah, that's right. Now I often hear people talking about this concept of resilience 
Um, we, as you improve your building, you are adding cumulatively to the citywide resilience. What does resilience mean? That is a great question. And so what SPUR has done is try to define uh, resilience in terms of recovery. So when you look at what happened in New Orleans after Katrina, you can see that's a city that lost, lost its, a lot of its people, um, has not recovered its building stock. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's not a good situation. I think everybody can agree. And what we really want to see in San Francisco is to, San Francis to have San Francisco rebuild well and quickly after a major disaster. And so we've actually defined what that means for all of our lifelines. So for how, how do we need our gas lines to perform after an earthquake? How do we need our water to perform? And then our building stock as well. So uh, we've put forward the goal of having 95% of our homes um, to be ready for shelter in place after a major earthquake and that way people can stay within the city we don't lose our workforce we don't we don't lose the people that make San Francisco so special we we keep everybody here and that allows us to recover um, our economy um, and everything uh, because it's so interdependent so that is a difficult goal but I think we can achieve it over the long term so thank you very, very much for hosting us and for hosting this great exhibit. And thank you very much for joining us for Building San Francisco. Stay safe.